Right, welcome back. My name is Christine Richards and I'm the research director with Z Prime and we're here to do another ETS 15 one-on-one. So we have Eric with Silver Spring Network here and thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, so you were on a panel this morning and we talked a little bit about the Internet of Things, smart cities. There was just so much excitement at this event about those different areas and all of the possibilities with them. But you know, we haven't seen a lot happen just yet. What, what are some of the reasons for that? Yeah, well, I agree with you, Christine. I mean, it's, there's a lot of energy, a lot of excitement. And we are starting to see some things happen. Uh, projects are starting to happen at scale, uh, both here in the U.S. and around the world. But, um, you know, as it turns out, it's, it's, uh, it takes a little bit more than just cheerleading. And, you know, our experience has been it takes really kind of three things to come together uh, to, to make projects happen. Uh, the first is, uh, you know, you need the right technology. And it's really interesting to me when people get on these panels and, uh, and the first thing they say is, hey, don't worry about the technology. You know, we'll figure the technology out. It's all about some other problem. Yeah. And uh, uh, that's not been our experience. These are hard projects. Mm -hmm. uh, the requirements uh, are, are very high. Uh, when cities or utilities or, or people like this are putting technology into the field, they expect it to last for 10, 15, 20 years and for it to operate flawlessly over that time without any field visits or going off and tweaking it. So it's a really yeah. high bar on technology. So that, that's the first thing. You've got to get the technology right. The second thing is that um, it takes really an ecosystem of, of companies and partners and mm -hmm. innovation to make these things happen. No company, not Silver Spring or, or anybody else, can really do everything it takes to make these projects successful. And so um, uh, we spend a lot of time working on standards and interoperability to help uh, enable platforms to be created that allow innovation. So we have a project in Bristol uh, in the UK as an example that has built in from the beginning a, a kind of an innovation incubator um, mm -hmm. where they're trying to uh, light it up to universities and individuals, companies to come in and innovate on that platform to find new ways to create value. And then I think the third thing that comes up is um, and this may sound a little odd, but you have to understand the motivations, the business models and motivations of the providers you're working with. Um, there are a lot of companies that are getting into this space because you know, maybe they already have um, some network or asset. They're trying to preserve an old business model. And so if, they're a, if you're a lighting company, you probably just want to sell more mm -hmm. lights. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're not really all that interested in enabling these other things. You just want to you know, sell more of your product. So you got to get all three of those things right. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, how do you see some of those, I mean, for companies that are out there that, you know, are working to get involved in this space, I mean, how do they, you know, change some of those motivations or really get lined up so, you know, we can have a lot of different companies working together? Well, I think it's a, it's a difference between maybe some incumbents and some new companies. You know, that's mm -hmm. one of the fun things about coming to an event like ETS is there's a lot of new companies, people with, you know, yeah. good ideas, maybe some of them are crazy ideas, who knows what'll stick. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's hard in this industry to get launched as a new as a new entity. Um, you know, the, the bar is pretty high to get this market to buy your products. Uh, and we know that because that's, you know, where we came yeah. from. Uh, so one of the things we encourage all of these uh, companies that are, you know, have some sort of an innovation or something clever is uh, acknowledge this need to kind of ride the wave. Mm -hmm. You can't do it all yourself. You can't raise enough money. You can't, you can't have enough resources to do that. Uh, you have to... Um, uh, find models and platforms that you can plug into. So mm -hmm. the way to think about it might be, how can you be an app on the iPhone as mm -hmm. opposed to having create the cellular phone system and the smartphone and the whole operating system and do your app? You know, that's a little too much for a new company to handle. Uh, established companies, I think, have to really rethink their business models and say, you know, how is this new world going to go forward? Yeah. And what about, I, I mean, with smart cities, there are so many different groups that have to come together. I mean, how do you start to get alignment among all those different interests? Yeah, I, I think actually you can't, and you should acknowledge up front that you can't. Yeah. Uh, the people who are interested in uh, public lighting are probably a different group of people than are interested in traffic, who may be an entirely different group of people within a city that are interested in, um, uh, in say, uh, garbage collection, yeah. right? And so um, you, have to, you have to come up with technologies and platforms again that people can adopt uh, new applications onto a common platform at whatever pace makes sense. You know, we like to think of it as innovating at the pace of value, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. um, we're seeing all sorts of interesting overlaps these days where 
Um, the street lights might go out, as an example, and then the environmental department at the utility might be monitoring CO and NO uh, levels uh, throughout the city. And then the traffic people might be doing something on traffic control. And they're all going to start doing something individually. But what gets magical is when all three of those things can come together. Mm -hmm. And now you can say, wait a minute. If I could improve the traffic flows, I could actually measure the reduction in environmental you know, pollution in an area because I've got better traffic flows. Yeah, so just understanding those overlaps and, and where connections can be made. And you, but you can't. It's just too hard to put everybody in a room and try to figure all of that out yeah. up front. You know, when, when the guys at DARPA were sitting around inventing the Internet, I don't think anybody sat there and said, you know, someday there's going to be Twitter. <laughs> you know, so have we accounted for Twitter yet? Mm -hmm. um, if, if, if we'd, we'd still be waiting to invent the internet if that's, uh, or you know, to give birth to the internet, if somebody had to try to figure out every single last thing that we're ever going to use it for. So you have to think of these as a journey, and mm -hmm. you have to have something that starts, something that gets the platforms in place, and then let the innovation take off. Awesome. Well, that's great advice. Thanks for joining us, Eric. Hey, thanks for having me.